I had just stepped inside when a freezing wind made the lights go out. In the darkness, I tripped over something. I reached down and felt an hourglass. As I held it, a voice whispered, Your time starts now. Shaken, I placed the hourglass back on the table next to me, deciding it was best to leave the desolate diner. As I stepped outside, the chilling breeze greeted me, reminding me of the long journey ahead. I approached my car, parked a short distance away. My thoughts were consumed by the strange hourglass. Needing to clear my head and find a place to rest, I started the engine and drove off. Hours on the quiet highway led my thoughts to curious places, pondering life's many endings. As the journey felt unending, a peculiar sight emerged. The sign, clearly damaged and weathered, contrasted with the H Hotel that radiated light invitingly. It stood tall and looked ancient, a relic from another era. But I needed a place to sleep. Inside was like stepping into a time capsule. Bright chandeliers adorned the high ceilings, illuminating lush red carpets that muffled my steps. Paintings of aristocrats in ancient garb looked down on me, their eyes following my every move. The front desk was manned by a man in old-fashioned attire, his bow tie and monocle giving him an air of distinction. One room? He inquired, his voice echoing eerily. Yes, please, I replied, trying to shake off an unsettling feeling. He handed me a small tarnished key. The number 13 was intricately carved into it. Most hotels avoid the number 13, deeming it unlucky. Yet, here it was. My room was situated at the end of a seemingly endless corridor. The journey felt eternal. Finally, I arrived and was met with a room that oozed antiquity. A grand four-poster bed with velvet curtains, an old rotary phone, and furnishings that looked like they belonged in a museum. I made my way to the bathroom to freshen up. The reflection in the mirror startled me. Lines etched my face, and strands of my hair had turned silver. Could this be real? A soft, rhythmic ticking reached my ears. Next to my bed, another hourglass stood, sand swiftly slipping away. As the last grain descended, a knock resonated on my door. An elderly man stood there, wrinkles mapping his face, eyes mirroring my own. Leave before it's too late, he murmured, vanishing into the corridor's shadows. Panicking, I dashed to the hotel's entrance. But where the door had been, there was only a brick wall. Whispers floated in the air, tales of the hotel's peculiar nature of time distorted and warped. An hour here equals ten years outside, one voice murmured. Desperation gripped me. I wandered the maze-like structure, finding hourglasses at every turn. The sky outside twisted in fast forward, the sun and moon in a relentless chase. I needed answers. I found my way back to the front desk. The clerk's smile was sinister. Looking to leave, he purred. He gestured to an ornate elevator, its doors shimmering. Reverse time if you wish to leave, but tread carefully. I entered, pressing the basement button. It descended endlessly until finally opening to reveal a colossal chamber. In its center, the largest hourglass I had ever seen, its sand nearly depleted. Shadowy figures whispered, urging me to act. Turn it, they hissed. With adrenaline-fueled strength, I flipped it. A whirlwind of chaos ensued. When clarity returned, I was outside. The hotel, decrepit and seemingly abandoned, loomed in the background. My car, though weathered, awaited. Relief washed over me, but the haunting memories of that place clung tightly. I drove off, vowing never to return. However, in my rearview mirror, the hotel's sign flickered, beckoning future weary travelers. How many, I wondered, had been ensnared by its temporal trap? And could anyone truly break free from the Hourglass Hotel's clutches?